Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the residual entropy of water using Linus Pauling's two different methods. Here are the references that I used in preparing this video. According to the third law of thermodynamics, a perfect crystal will have zero entropy at absolute zero. However, if we don't have a perfect crystal, then the entropy at absolute zero, the so-called residual entropy, will not be zero. And we can calculate it using the microcanonical ensemble using the formula S equals K times the natural log of omega. In our formula, omega is the number of different configurations of the molecules in the crystal. In ice, we realize that each oxygen atom, shown here as a red sphere, is connected to four others in a nearly tetrahedral arrangement, and the other four neighboring oxygen atoms are shown as one, two, three, and four. An efficient way to generate a tetrahedral shape is to take a cube as shown and then connect the opposite vertices. Here are one, two, three, and four with the center of the sphere. These gray lines also are useful because along this line between each pair of oxygen atoms, which are shown as red spheres, we will find a single hydrogen atom that will form the hydrogen bond. It will either be a hydrogen bond donor or an acceptor, meaning that it will be closer to one oxygen or the other, but not both. Pauling's first method depends upon seeing how many different ways we can arrange a water molecule at the central position so that it is hydrogen bound to exactly two of its neighbors by hydrogen bond donors, which are shown as the white circular spheres, the hydrogen atoms, they're connected to the central oxygen atom. This is the first of the six different ways that we can arrange the water molecule at the central position. Here is the second configuration, where now the central water molecule is hydrogen bound to oxygen one and oxygen three by hydrogen bond donation. This is the third configuration to neighboring oxygens one and four. Here is the fourth configuration. Here is the fifth. And here is the sixth, bound to oxygens three and four. So here are the six possible configurations of water in the central position, subject to the fact that it's making two hydrogen bond donations and we're not seeing the hydrogen bond acceptance from the other two oxygen atoms. If this was all that was involved, then the number of configurations would be six to the n power. But we have some limitations on which of the configurations are available. Here we emphasize that each oxygen is connected to its four neighbors by means of hydrogen bonds, which are just shown here as gray lines. But remember, those can either be hydrogen bond donations or acceptances relative to our central oxygen atom. When we were working out the uh, ways of arranging the central water molecule, that was in, we made the pictures in terms of hydrogen bond donors. So since we know that it has to have two hydrogen bond acceptors, we know that two out of the four positions 
are already filled. So the likelihood that one of our hydrogen bond donors is going to be in a position that's not already taken up is going to be one out of two. And the possibility that both of our hydrogens for our hydrogen bond donors are going to go into positions that are already unoccupied is going to be one out of four. Therefore, we have to take our six possible configurations of the water molecule in the center and divide that by four to get the proper number of configurations. And six divided by four is simply equal to three over two. Therefore, by Pauling's first method, the number of configurations for our entire crystal, a mole worth, should be three over two to the nth power. We'll come back to see how that results in our final calculation in just a couple of minutes. Now we look at Pauling's second method. We notice that each oxygen atom in water is connected to two hydrogens. So if there are n oxygen atoms, there must be two n hydrogens. And relative to each oxygen atom, there are four different directions in which it might uh, send its hydrogens, either as acceptors or donors. So two to the fourth power is equal to 16. So we'll see that there are 16 configurations of the hydrogen atoms around each individual oxygen in the lattice. Here is a second possible configuration. Notice in this one that we have three hydrogen atoms directly connected to the oxygen, which violates our normal rule that there have to be exactly two hydrogens attached to each oxygen. So therefore, we're going to notice that some configurations are going to be acceptable and some are not going to be acceptable. So here are all of the two to the fourth power equals 16 configurations of the hydrogen atoms around the central oxygen. This configuration isn't allowed because it has four hydrogens directly attached to the central oxygen, and whereas we know we can only have two. These four configurations we can also throw out because we have three hydrogens directly attached to the central oxygen rather than two, so therefore these are impossible as well. In these four configurations, we only have a single hydrogen attached to each oxygen, being one too few, so these are not eligible configurations. In this final configuration, we have no hydrogens directly attached to the central oxygen, so therefore this one is ineligible as well. Here again, we have listed all 16 possible configurations and it was a line through those that are not eligible. So we see that six out of 16 or three out of eight are going to give eligible configurations. So let's compute the number of configurations by calling the second method. At the beginning, we have the two to the two n. That's a number of different ways of arranging the uh, hydrogen bonds around n oxygen atoms. And then followed by the three h to the n power. This is the proportion of those which lead to legitimate configurations. Remember, only six out of 16 or three out of eight of those 
gave a legitimate uh, structure for the central water molecule. And then we see that we can uh, use the powers of exponents that 2 to the 2n is simply 4 to the n power. We can pull everything under the n, and we get 12 divided by 8 to the nth power, which is simply the same as 3 over 2 to the nth power. So we see that whether we use Pauling's first method or his second method, we get exactly the same answer for the number of configurations of water in ice. Continuing the calculation, we get that uh, our gas constant R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. The natural log of 3 over 2 is 0 0.40547, which gives us a residual entropy of water of 3.371 joules per Kelvin per mole. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay safe, and as always, have a good one.